I'm so excited to be here with you guys tonight. Thank you for being here, Night Owls. So I am Carrie Gesslison. I'm the publicity manager for Owl Hall Press, and I am excited to be here tonight to talk to you about 10 ways to be more visible as an author. And I think this is a really exciting topic, um, and I hope that you um, get something from it tonight. So thank you again for being with us. I really love this quote. As creative in a crowded world, we can no longer sit in our rooms creating alone if we want a viable income. And that's from Joanna Penn. So being visible as an author, creating an author brand or marketing yourself, whatever you want to call it, it, it can all be um, very intimidating and overwhelming because it's hard to put yourself out there like that, but it's also an essential piece to getting your book in front of readers. I love this quote so much, um, and I think it really is telling, especially as an author, that you can't sit back anymore. You have to be um, engaged, and you can't create alone, and that's where hopefully this night, um, this presentation kind of plays into that, and I really think that it should be one of the funnest parts of publishing your book and being an author. You've already written this awesome book. You've already done the super hard parts about editing and publishing it. And now is the time to tell everyone um, about the exciting world and characters that you've created. So this should really be the most exciting part um, of your journey of getting your book in front of, of readers. <clears throat> so at Owl Hollow, we like to talk about marketing in terms of storytelling. And as authors, you're a natural storyteller. You um, so this makes it a little less intimidating. You've already you're already good at telling stories. So we just want to piggyback on that and um, and and accentuate that that you're you're natural storytellers and we like telling stories. So readers love great books and they love their favorite authors. So when you find new readers for your book, it's because the story that you're telling about who you are and what you're writing. Hopefully looking um, at being visible as a way to share your story uh, instead of being obnoxious and salesy will make it easier to think about putting yourself out there. And this shouldn't be overwhelming. Uh, as an author, I think if you just pick one thing to focus on and then spend 20 minutes um, a day or work on that one thing until you feel comfortable with it, you'll be in a really good place. Once you've nailed that one thing, you can start the next thing, but visibility should be a big part of your author plan, but it shouldn't be the most stressful part. Um, so let's talk about 10 ways to be more visible. Uh, first of all, going along with the idea of um, marketing being all about storytelling, uh, number one is to know your story which I think sounds funny because you just wrote that story, right? You wrote that, um, you wrote the book, but as an author, what is your hook? What is your work about? Know your own story and then it's a lot easier to tell it to others. For example, I love Emily Lane's uh, story about how she got her idea for her book, These Wicked Waters. Um, when she was on a cruise ship, she was her cruise ship caught on fire and you can actually see the intro video on our YouTube page. Um, but sh so they, the ship caught on fire and they were lowering them into lifeboats. And she thought, what if something darker lies beneath the waves and her idea for a scary life threatening sirens was born. I also love, um, another great example is Lauren Nicole Taylor. When she talks about her author story, she often talks about her heritage. Her books are based on the experiences of her grandparents at internment camps. And her new series coming this summer is based on her mixed Asian background in a fantasy world that she writes about um, her culture because it's something that matters to her uh, that then she talks about it and posts on social media ab about it because it's personal to her. It's her story. And it's, um, her books. So it, it's who she is as a storyteller and that, that matters. So, um, and then when you know who you are and what makes your story unique with you telling it, it's much easier to share, um, with other people because the right audience will gravitate towards you when you're the one telling the story, when you're the one, um, 
giving it that unique twist. It makes people want to know more about you and you're excited to share what you're all about uh, so that it feels genuine and not super salesy because no one, no one likes to be pushy, right? So I think um, that's the most important part is you telling it from your unique perspective and you are the one that's, that's selling this, this piece that you've worked so hard on. And that brings us to number two, be an expert. I love this graph because I feel like uh, it shows that although all of your small efforts will add up, your unique expertise is what readers really latch onto. It's what makes people fans of you and your con and your continued work, the content that you put out there. This goes hand in hand with telling your own story, but it involves giving yourself permission to claim your knowledge as an expert. I know that's kind of hard. I think a lot of people don't think that they're experts and they get um, nervous about that, but you are. There are a lot of different ways to do this, but there are, but here are a few examples. So Jen Jenkins is the author of Teen Writer's Guide and she's an excellent teacher. So to share her expertise, she started a YouTube channel with bite-sized um, sized writing lessons that are so helpful. It's like a little mini writing conference and it's a really smart way to get people excited about what she's teaching in her book. But this works for fiction too. It's not just for nonfiction. So for example, uh, Colette Sewell, Sewell, I hope I'm saying that right, um, is a former dancer and dance instructor. And that knowledge led to her charming middle grade Kiki McAdoo and the Graveyard Ballerinas. She's also a painter. So she has shared snapshots of her characters through her painting. One really fun thing we did uh, was a video chat between her and cute kids who wanted to know more about dancing and writing. And Colette was able to share stories and answer those questions because of her expertise. I think that that's, you know, really important because your readers will connect with you on that basis um, in a lot of ways by little pieces of your writing. Um, another one is author Benjamin Thomas, who is a former EMT. Because of his knowledge of the medical world, his reviews often state how authentic his medical details are, which makes the fiction come to life and makes him really interesting in interviews. Another area where he's an expert is um, on Jack the Ripper from all his historical research. So he's got all this cool little areas um, that are really fascinating um, and he's a fun expert to talk to because he knows so much about them. And his book brings both of those together beautifully and it's a really fun read. So <clears throat> a few ways that you can share your expertise in all your bios where your name shows up online, talk about what you're an expert in. And I get that it's hard to brag about yourself, but this is your time to shine. This is to, your time to show what you're about and, and what you can do. So don't be so modest and, and sell yourself. Um, write guest posts for blogs or websites with similar interests or people hoping to learn more about what you're an expert in because people care. They really do. Uh, be willing to share your expertise with others. Pitch to podcasts, uh, join forums, find creative ways, and be willing to give your time where you can. Whether you write fiction or nonfiction, if you've written a book, you're an expert on something. You know more about something than most of the world does. Own those things. Talk about them. Others want to learn from you. They want to listen uh, to those stories that you can tell. And that brings us to number three. Pick a platform and be consistent. So social media is amazing. It's leveled the playing fields for authors in a lot of ways. It's free advertising, which woo -woo, free advertising. Um, and it's something you can do from home and in your spare time. It doesn't take a lot of time. I mean, it does sometimes, but, um, but if you piece it out a little bit over the span of days, it, it's not overwhelming and time consuming. It's been a huge game changer for authors, uh, but it can also be overwhelming. Like I was saying that it can, uh, it can feel like a lot, especially if you're on multiple flat platforms. So when you try to be everywhere on all the platforms, you're often spreading yourself too thin. And if you think about it, there's generally one place that you're at most of the time. So 
um, that probably will draw you to it. And it will probably be easier to figure out what that platform is because you're generally spending your time on one platform more than another. So stick with that. Make it your superpower to engage with that platform and don't worry as much about the others. If you want to post once a month or once a week um, or to make it so that you don't have a dead page, then do that. But um, focus your energy and be consistent at being great at one platform so that it doesn't feel so overwhelming when you're trying to do those. Um, so this can be Twitter. If you like short, snappy, bite-sized shares and engaging with the author community, this can be creating a Facebook author page if this is where you and your friends and readers spend a lot of time. It can be Instagram if you love sharing um, book photos or engaging with pretty pictures, which I think a lot of people do. So, um, Or it can be on Pinterest if you like to share ideas and aesthetics in that way. It can be YouTube if you love to talk and be on screen. If you're a jazzy dancer, maybe that's TikTok for you. And that's a super up and coming one. So I think that you can find a platform that works for you. But the most part is, you know, be consistent on it and choose one. So here's a few examples of people who have done a really good job with this. Um, Jen Bardsley, she's the YA girl, new. Um, she loved talking about young adult fiction, so she started a Facebook page, which grew to over 20,000 followers. This is a great move because she wasn't just talking up her book. She was talking about her book, uh, talking about books she loved um, by other people and with other people, and those similarities grew her audience. She actually has this great article with tips to building a Facebook page, so go read that on her on her site because I think it's really helpful. Another one is Nicole Conway. She has done some really cool things with her Pinterest page. Uh, she loves dragons and shares ideas and all of those are her brand. Even if she's not selling her book, she's talking about dragons with other people who have similar fandoms than she does. And I think that it's really pretty and really eye-catching. Um, another example, is Paul Rizzoli. He is a naturalist and explorer um, and is fairly well known, but even though he has an account on each uh, social media platform, Instagram is where people flock to him because he has such a great visual content. So this is the place he really interacts with his audience. He shares jungle workouts and talks about the environment and local culture. So he's never really talking directly about his book, but people love him and his mission. So they go and find it. Um, it doesn't matter which one you choose as long as you're excited to be there um, and you're committed to showing up consistently, even on the days when you're not as excited about it, because that's important. Um, so some ways to do that and, and to give you some ideas on how to engage that way um, are, you know, ask questions, give updates, share videos, pictures, and links, take polls, do quizzes, show your personality, show the behind the scenes of the author life. You'll find your people. And maybe, you know, we don't have tens of thousands of followers yet, but even the most popular pages get started at zero and then they keep showing up. And that is the most important part, I think, of so many facets of life is you keep showing up, even on the days that you're not excited about it. Um, so that it brings us to number four. Update your author page on Amazon. Love Amazon or hate it, there, that is where most books are being sold right now. And your author page is a huge way to be visible to a lot of people. You can include links to your bios um, or to your blog. If you have one, you can share your personality and expertise in your bio. Uh, it's a landing page that potentially has thousands of viewers every single month. So some examples of that, Lee Statham has a really great Amazon author page. And I love that she has author updates and shares what she's up to. Uh, so new readers can learn more about her and existing readers can stay up to date. Uh, it's the same for BookBub uh, and Goodreads. They're the main players in the industry right now. So take a few minutes and keep those pages updated. 
Uh, here's Lynn Vo Roman's BookBub page. Uh, it's got a clean look. It's got a great bio. It shows her books and it's a fun place for readers to find her because BookBub caters only to readers and writers. So um, this doesn't have to be time consuming, uh, but it at least um, brings, you know, being present on those platforms with a good photo and bio will make a huge difference in readers being able to find you and connect with you. Number five, have a website. Uh, in addition to making yourself uh, be visible on existing sites, have your own. You don't have to spend a lot of money or make it amazing, but people should be able to find you on the internet. Have a home uh, where readers can learn more about you and your books. So some examples of that, Ashley Cowell's book um, is about the Titanic. So she's got some great information and freebies about the part in history that a lot of people are attracted to. And she's got a really pretty page here that highlights a lot of great things. Another example is Matt Carter um, has some great content about his expertise as a theme park employee, which led to his horror novel, Benny Town. And I think backstories are so fun. I think that it helps me connect with them. And it's just, it's like watching the, you know, the behind the scenes of, of a good movie. You just want to learn all you can about these people and their lives and what got them to where they are. Another example uh, is Jen Marie Hawkins. Uh, it's fabulous. And I love that she shares personal information about what inspires her and what her playlists contain and what she's in love with. These personal details fit her brand perfectly because of the really beautiful characters driven, uh, driven stories that she writes. She's got another one coming out in a little bit, um, that we're all really excited about. So whatever you decide to do, Create or hire a nice looking website that tells about you. There are free options. There are paid options. It's up to you that what you want to do. And when you think about your website, think about creating some type of emotional connection with the people who find you. Um, that's all of these authors have done in different ways. They've found a creative way that matches their personality and their style, um, and it makes it personal to them, but it also connects people to you. So make it personal to you. Oh, wrong one. Um, but all websites should generally have author bios, uh, book descriptions, and links to buy the books. Blogs are a great way to share short stories, to pull people in media pages, links to where you've appeared, um, downloadable photos, info sheets and events. Even Paul Rizzoli, he's on several Netflix, uh, do not documentaries, but shows about animals and stuff. So those are really great uh, to have on your website so people can find where you're at. Contact form or info and newsletter email list where you're up for it. So when you're up for it. So when people can, can email you and ask questions or whatever. But I would strongly suggest visiting at least 10 to 20 websites of your favorite authors. Um, find out what you love, what colors that, that you like, that you're looking for, what, um, what you connect with on their bio or book description, what makes you want to stay, what makes you not want to stay. Take notes and then incorporate those ideas um, into your own version of your author website. And I think that it will surprise you how that connects people to you. All right, number six, get to know your community locally and online. So getting to know the local community has been hard um, in the past year with COVID, but hopefully things are opening back up again and there are always a ton of options online. Uh, thank goodness for technology, right? Here are some examples of um, of local ways that you can get connected. Darby, wonderful Darby, who volunteers for local writing chapters. Uh, one as a mentor society of children's book, uh, children's book writers and illustrators, and also as a columnist for Pikes Peak Writers. She also does tons of school visits and makes herself available to the age group she writes for. Um, another great example, Candice is awesome because she works for her local bookstore. 
She shares book suggestions with people in person and online. And because she's so knowledgeable about all types of books, she's great at connecting to other authors and readers. Another great one uh, is Paul Michael Garrison. He's amazing because he uh, has put himself out there and has been invited to a lot of local events before the pandemic hit um, and a many online events after. He's great about tagging organizations in his posts and thinking and thanking them for hosting him, building up long-term connections, which is so important. Um, another great example, Josh Roberts, his book came out smack dab in the middle of the pandemic. So he was really forced to focus online and he did some cool things. Um, and I'll give you four examples. Uh, first, he helped start a group of spooky middle grade authors who share each other's books and do virtual school visits, which is so cool. Um, as a community, it's easier for them to get traction than it is for one person on their own, which is so true. Um, he also shares his writing journey on the hashtag um, 5am writers. This is cool because he shows his dedication as an author and he talks to members um, of that writing community and he also attracts attention um, of readers who see the hashtag and go to check out what he's all about. Uh, he also has a really great online bio, which he talked, um, which we talked about earlier, where he shares exactly who he is and where to find him and what his book is. It's all right there, front and center, every time he pops up on these different communities. And finally, when he hits 100 reviews, he gave away 100 signed copies of his book. Obviously, everyone can't do that, but the point is that he is always looking for cool and interesting ways to engage with the online community. So hopefully those examples give you some good ideas of where you can start either in person um, or online. Here are a few more ways to get to know other writers and readers. Um, so volunteering for a writing conference. Uh, we've talked about Jen Jenkins. She does the teen author boot camp, and a lot of our authors from Al Hollow have presented there at her um, at her conference attend re readings in your local area and talk to people. Follow and engage with your favorite authors online. Again, a big one, online is where it's at. Uh, take a writing class at a local college. Find out what programs your local library offers. Talk with people from Query Tracker or other online groups where you're in similar parts of the publication process. It's always nice to find people and connect with people who are on the same journey that you are and um, you can help each other out. Uh, join and then join online communities like 5am Writers Club, Pitch Wars, uh, the KSS Club, whatever. This can be totally intimidating to our little introverted selves. I know that it's so hard for me um, to put myself out there, but I also think that when you start attending classes and talk to other people, you'll be amazed at how many people you find who are just like you. And it makes you feel less alone and it makes you, it gets you an excitement about where you're at on that path and can reignite that excitement to keep going. Um, number seven, learn to speak in public. This is a hard one. Though I'm talking to you right now on a very public forum, it is not my forte and it takes a lot to get there. But I love this quote, communication is the backbone of our society. It allows us to form connections, influence decision and motivate change. Without communication skills, the ability to progress in the working world and in life itself would be nearly impossible. It shows how powerful it can be in making connections and being visible. So I just think, yeah, public speaking is hard, but public speaking isn't something that we all do every day. I mean, hopefully you kind of get a break from it because it is a little bit draining, but um, what a great skill to have and whenever it comes up. So you can speak to win people over who will want to read your books. You can share your knowledge and expertise you can connect in ways that are much more personal and personable than you otherwise could. There are tons of online opportunities right now, and those are great places to start practicing. 
when you get comfortable speaking uh, to audience, it will open up all kinds of doors. So here are some examples and ideas of places to start. So speak at schools, especially if you're writing middle grade and young adult. Work with your publisher if you need help or, um, or find a way to connect with teachers and school libraries, which I think is a great connection anyway. Um, be on podcasts. We've already talked about podcasts a little bit, but they are so popular right now and they're such a great avenue to be able to do those things. Um, volunteer for local events at libraries and with reading programs. Start your own group of experts. Josh in the spooky M middle grade right there. Find your own little writing groups. I know um, Emma's had a writing group for years and she's had great connections and made great friends through there. Um, do Instagram stories. They're low pressure because they don't stick around, but they can help you feel more comfortable in front of a camera and you can learn what it, uh, what is and isn't working for your speaking voice and mannerisms. Do interviews. Um, our author, Tom Welsh does, you know, he's done a lot author events, interviews, um, about gaming and all sorts of stuff. Create your own audiences. That's, a big one that people will connect with you as you're creating your own audience um, through your writing and you're talking about your working. Um, some examples that we've seen, I brought up Thomas Welsh. He pitched himself for a local news station. He's been invited to local liter uh, literary events in Scotland where he lives. And he's talked a lot online about his book, but also about being a video game writer. And those audiences helped cross promote the different projects that he's working on. He was so great about getting out there, knocking on doors, and he just is wonderful. Um, Shelly X. Leon has a doctorate, is a former teacher, and is just a really smart person all around. We did a Facebook Live with her a couple weeks ago. You should check that out. Um, <clears throat> she, so she started a podcast with a fellow writer, and they talked about all things writing and publishing and interview inter interviewed interesting guests. Um, Juan Zapata has a great YouTube channel where he and his co-host discuss cultural identity. And uh, it's a really interesting way to celebrate his own heritage and talk with other creative people about where they fit in the world. So wherever you are, wherever you want to start, just begin getting yourself used to speaking in public. Uh, whether you write fiction or nonfiction, you'll hopefully have interviews, book signings, author panels, uh, speaking at writing conferences and other events. It's a skill that's useful to have, even though most of us are introverts who prefer being behind a computer. I know that I am. But one thing that I did in college when I um, was getting my teaching degree, they had us film um, several of our lessons that we were giving. Um, for the purpose of being able to look at them and say, are you being distracting with how you're using your hands or your body language? Are you um, speaking, uh, you know, well enough for the kids to hear you in the back? And it was really eye-opening to see uh, how you do that. Talk to yourself in the mirror. There's lots of different ways to help coach yourself through uh, being able to speak in front of people because it's, it's not very fun. All right, number eight, be a nice person. I think that goes without being said in the whole world, but the published industry, publishing industry is full of networking and there are small pools of publishers and agents and editors. So don't burn bridges by being a diva. And when you highlight others accomplishments and say kind things about their work, they're more likely to be available when you need the same thing. Um, one example that I love um, of this is Marianne Woods. If you Google her, you'll find her all over the place online. She's been in TV and film industry. She's been in theater. She's mentored upcoming writers. She's written her own great book. She's all over the place because she's a nice person and was able to build connections in several different industries. She didn't burn bridges. She made friends and people were glad to keep working with her. Um, <clears throat> Some ideas of how to do that. Find ways to thank your fans for their support. Leave reviews for peers and authors that you admire. Follow up on events and opportunities with a thank you note. I know that sounds so old fashioned, but a thank you note goes a long way. And um, 
it's not awkward at all. I don't think anyone gets awkward by receiving a thank you note for something that they did. Um, look for ways to share and give to others as you're building bridges along the way. Those will come back to you later on. I could give many example of lovely authors that we've loved working with, agents who have helped us figure out something that we that we hadn't done before and we didn't know how to do. Uh, we love when our authors look out for each other, read each other's books, attend each other's events. Um, you guys are so great at hopping onto our Facebook lives on Thursday nights and, and helping each other and connecting with each other and supporting each other. And we love that. Uh, there's um, camaraderie and being a nice person in this industry. Be the kind of person that uplifts and doesn't tear down. People will gravitate towards that. And I 100% believe that with all my heart, that people gravitate towards kind people. All right, number nine, <clears throat> don't worry about being late to the party. Just find something and start. It doesn't have to be huge or dramatic. And like I said before, even spending 20 minutes a day towards one thing will compound over time. Uh, social media is always changing. New platforms are always popping up. We're always continually learning and changing as the industry changes. And more importantly, you being you is something different and worthwhile. You have a different personality and different expertise than anyone else. So enjoy that and play with that. There are thousands of authors vying for attention. You won't win by trying to beat them at their own game. Gain your own following by sharing what you're excited about uh, and what you're passionate about. People will gravitate towards you. A few examples of authors who really are really great, like electric personalities, are uh, Todd Mitchell. He's awesome because he's becoming known for his nature fiction. He's passionate about the environment, and that comes through in his writing. He is also writing, a writing professor, so he has a lot of knowledge to share. He's also got some quirky additions like a love of squirrels, and he's just really unique and entertaining to follow. If this, you know, blurb on his website about love books, writing alien squirrels or other odd things, I feel like that's a really good hook, a really good pull in. And even if you like one or all of those things, I think it is a fun way to connect. Um, another good example is Benjamin Sperduto. I think I said that right. Uh, he's a unique mix of Russian history, RPG games, rock music, and epic fantasy. His feed is always interesting, and he draws in people who are passionate about the same things that he is. He also made his own music as a soundtrack for his book. So his different talents come together in unique ways, and it draws people to him because he has such different um, facets that he's interested in and that he pulls all together. Um, as you think about your visibility as an author, uh, take some time and write down what's unique about you as an author. What's unique about your story and your message? What's unique about the readers that you're trying to reach? Uh, I think writing those out and, and just being able to see it on paper will help so much with the thought process of how you can reach those people when you figure out what's unique about you and what's unique about your story. You'll find areas where those intersect and you'll play you know, them up in ways that nobody else can. Again, they gravitate towards you. And um, so that leads us to our 10th and final one. Write your next great book. Nothing sells books like books. So I won't depress you with the number about how many books are published per day, but needless to say, it's almost never that an author's career is built on one book. It's just not, I wish I could tell you that that baby you've been working on for years, that you've poured your blood, sweat, and tears, that you've published, or that you've um, edited and re-edited all over again was just gonna make you a millionaire overnight. But it's almost never that an author's career is built in on one book. And a lot of overnight successes we hear about have been working for years or decades to get to that point. I absolutely love this article by EVA Schwab about how people think she's an overnight success, but how long it actually took her. You should definitely check out the article, but I wanted to end um, on this one quote. She says, keep writing, 
Keep showing up. The world really does need your stories and you will find your perfect readers. With each new book that momentum builds, your audience grows. I, um, oh, sorry, I didn't read hers. <laughs> success is a thing, so largely out of control. Overnight success is all, almost always a myth. Half of this industry is luck and half of it is refusal to quit. And that's what I was saying when I thought I was reading her quote. Sorry. That keeps showing up. That's really... Again, a lot of things in life are like that. If you keep showing up, the world really does need your stories. And hopefully you found something helpful in this presentation presentation tonight. Um, we're all in this business because we love books and stories, but try to think um, but try to think of it as a long-term game. That if you're in it for life, the small acts repeated consistently will add up to something great and big. Wherever you are in the publishing journey, if you make the commitment to spend 20 minutes each day making yourself more visible, whether that's tweet about your writing life or responding to comments on your website or sharing a favorite quote, those things will add up. 20 minutes or even an action, one action every single day will make a huge difference in your author career over time. Um, so that's the end of the presentation. Um, hopefully there are some questions or comments or whatever, and Emma's going to send those to me, but I've loved talking about this. I feel really passionate about it. Um, and I, I don't feel like I'm an expert in a lot of things. I own it. So if you do think I am cool, I'll own it. Um, but I think that there's a lot of little things that, that can make us more visible that can, um, bring in positive publicity and, um, can be overall really beneficial in a lot of ways. Um, okay, Emma says, we'll wait just a minute. I'll talk about um, some exciting things that are happening and have happened this week. Um, a huge congratulations to Nicole Conway um, for her scales book. It hit three number one spots on Amazon and overall 600 in all, in all of Am Amazon. You can see it on there, 641. That's a huge accomplishment and so cool to see so many number ones next to that. So great job, Nicole. And then next um, week, so our book club book of the month, hopefully you've heard of that, um, where we highlight one of our books and when we do, it's 99 cents, um, is The Poppy and the Rose. And it's an exciting time because it coincides with the Titanic um, and Ashley will talk more about that um, next week. But if you haven't read it yet and you're dying to, it's 99 cents right now. So make sure you grab your copy and um, we, and it will be all through April. So hopefully you'll join us next week and we'll talk more about that. But the untold stories of the Titanic is next week and we're excited to do that. Um, Emma's still sending me some questions, but um, I'm always open for suggestions about um, ideas that you have about making yourself more um, more visible, put yourself out there. Um, Thomas Welsh, who I talked about, uh, would email me things uh, periodically and we're on different time zones. So he uh, he's always like, hey, I'm going to do this or I need my um, publisher to do this. So we kind of piggybacked on those things, but he, he was really good at getting himself out there as are a lot of our other authors that do a great job of hitting the ground running and, and making their stars happen. Um, okay, Eleni says, I've published only one book so far. I can attest to that only books sell other books. Yes, thank you. It, it is hard and I think a lot of people hear about big name authors and think, um, well, why can't I be as good as them? But it, I can tell you that they have stories that are buried somewhere in years past that didn't make it as big as some of their other ones did. And it took consistently rebooting those out there. So thank you, Eleni. Um, Candace says, I love how I got to know more about Owl Hollow Press authors through the examples mentioned. Thank you. I think that we have such a great network. We have such great authors and amazing books. And I feel so lucky to be a part of it. And I feel so grateful to 
um, get to be part of this world. I am, um, Emma probably is so annoyed with me, but I think about your books, our Owl Hollow books nonstop. And I think of, I try to think of fun ways to get readers there in front of them. And um, I just am constantly thinking of fun and engaging ways to make them sell. So you're always on my mind, guys. Darby says, what a great presentation, Carrie. Oh, thank you. You gave so many good ideas. Darby says, how can I be more flashy as an author? Um, I like that question. I, I don't think flashy is necessarily always better. I feel like there are um, ways of getting yourself in more places, but I think that, um, I don't know. I think that flashy sometimes comes across as obnoxious. Um, but I think that doing the, the right ways and, um, I don't know, doing the small things that build up to big things. Um, Darby, you're great already in that year. Your books are gauged towards middle graders and you, I have always seen you in your happy place when you're with middle graders, when you're doing school visits and you're talking about it. And I feel like that makes a huge difference that you're, um, out there fighting for, you know, young boys to continue to love reading. And I feel like as an author, um, doing those small things will make you more appealing to the people that you are trying to reach in your writing. So I think that your school visits make you really appealing. I think if I was a kid and had an author come to my school, I think I would just about die from excitement of being in the same room. So I think that small things um, add up to great ones, but I don't think that being my and it's my personal opinion but I don't think that flashy is always the best answer I think that consistency showing up on platforms and and proving that you are unique and exciting in ways that aren't always in your face are um more of a way to go I think <laughs> Shannon says glitter there you have it and you're into western so get a glittery western shirt I think I think you got it Mariah says yay we love scales more love for Nicole like I said, I hope that this has been beneficial for you. I love promoting books and I, I really feel like um, hopefully one thing spoke to you um, and that it can build up to something great. And I'm always, Emma and I are always behind the scenes trying our best to get the best publicity for you and, um, and get people in front of your books because they really are magical in so many ways and they deserve to be loved by the world and we'll continue to do that every day but i sure loved being with you tonight and i'm excited to see what you come up with and and ways to promote yourself more so thank you all again and hope that you have a great night subscribe to our channel so you'll never miss an upload or join us live every Thursday for author interviews, book clubs, writing advice, and more on Facebook at Owl Hollow Press, 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific. See you Thursday.